Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132, wherein we will be looking at the particular definition of exactly what is a particle and what is a wave. So what are our goals for this video? Our goal for the entire course is to understand what electrons and light really are at a deep fundamental level. And at a deep fundamental level, both light and electrons exhibit properties that are wave-like and particle-like. We'll discuss this dichotomy a little bit more in class. However, since light and electrons have wave-like properties and particle-like properties, it's very important to be clear to ourselves exactly what a particle is and what a wave is. And this is the goal of this video. So let's begin by thinking about particles, which are probably the easier of the pair. So what is a particle? Well, the simplest image of a particle is probably just a ball. We talked about particles a lot in 131 in the point mass approximation, but it's probably best that we flush out our definitions. So what exactly is a particle? What properties apply to all particles? Well, in its most generic sense, a particle is a chunk of stuff. It exists in a particular place and at a particular time. And a particle doesn't go around corners. If I throw this ball at a door, it'll either go through the door or bounce back. It won't, like, curve around it, air resistance and whatnot notwithstanding. Particles can, but do not necessarily have to have mass. We will talk about a massless particle in class. But all particles can be thought of as having momentum, that quantity from 131 of mass times velocity. Particles can also be thought of as having energy. So that's particles. Now, what about waves? Well, before we start talking about waves, it's probably best to give a few different examples of waves. If I ask you to think of a wave, the first thing that probably would come to most of your minds is something like a water wave. But we could also have waves on a string, like this little pulse in this animation, or even sound waves, as in this animation, where the dots represent individual air molecules vibrating back and forth as a sound wave passes by. So our goal is to produce some common properties of all waves. And this is going to be somewhat challenging, actually. Definitely more challenging than for particles. So this is probably the most generic picture that a lot of you have. Some sort of sine or cosine shape traveling along. But this is not representative of all waves, and we want our definition to be in terms of properties that apply to every possible wave that we can think of. So let's go through a few questions and develop a definition of a wave. So first things first, must a wave actually go anywhere? Must a wave travel? Well, no. Sure, most waves go somewhere. Water waves travel across an ocean, for example. But here's an example of a wave that doesn't really travel. A uh, guitar string, when you pluck it, certainly the string waves back and forth, but the string doesn't go anywhere. The wave stands on the string. This is called a standing wave. So traveling cannot be part of our definition of a wave. Must a wave be a repeating pattern? Again, not really. While this might be the image that a lot of you have in mind when I say the word wave, which is a repeating pattern, remember this little wave pulse going up and down the string. That's a wave, but it's not a repeating pattern. It's just a single pulse going back and forth on this string. Must a wave have up and down motion? Well, again, no, sure. This standard picture of a wave that you have in your head might, but remember the sound wave? In the sound wave, the molecules move back and forth in the same direction as the wave's motion. In contrast to the wave you probably have in mind, 
where things move perpendicular to the wave's motion. Now we need a little bit of terminology. Waves that do wiggle perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave are called transverse waves. So these are the waves that you probably have in mind, and these are the ones that we're mostly going to be interested in. So some basic terminology of transverse waves, and we'll introduce some more later, are that waves have a peak, what we call a trough, and then the distance from the zero line to either a peak or a trough is called the amplitude. Okay, so clearly defining a wave is getting to be somewhat challenging. What other properties of a wave could we perhaps use? Well, what about bending around corners? We know that particles don't bend around corners. What about waves? Well, it turns out that waves do bend around corners. As in this little example, where the waves, water waves, go through a little aperture and spread out, bending around the corner. In the video on the next slide, we'll see some other important properties of waves that all waves do share. So out here at the campus pond, if I go and just hit the water with a single stick, we see we get waves coming out in all directions, radiating away from the spot where the ball hits the water. Things get a little bit more interesting, however, if we have two sources of waves going at the same time, next to each other, like so. So now we get two waves, each radiating out from its source. In some places, the waves line up peak to peak, or trough to trough, and add up, resulting in a larger wave at that point. In other places, the peak of one wave meets the trough of the other, resulting in some cancellation. This phenomenon, where waves can interact with each other, adding in some places, oh, this phenomenon of waves adding in some places and canceling in others is known as interference and is a characteristic property of waves. So what is a wave? Well, a wave is a disturbance that can but doesn't necessarily have to travel or it can just store energy and momentum. So a traveling wave will carry energy from one position to another. Think of a water wave that carries energy as it moves across the ocean. And also momentum. When that wave hits you, you feel the momentum of the wave. So a traveling wave will carry energy or momentum. For a standing wave, like we talked about, that energy is just being stored. So when I pluck a guitar string, the energy is just being stored in the string and then ultimately released as sound that we hear. A wave need not necessarily repeat. We can have those simple pulse waves that we talked about. But a wave can bend around corners, and waves of the same kind can interact with each other or with themselves, adding in some places, canceling in other places, through this idea of interference discussed in that video. So these are sort of the fundamental characteristics of waves. They don't exist at a particular place. They sort of spread out over a couple of different places and they can carry energy and momentum while bending around corners and interacting with themselves or other waves of the same kind. So to summarize, particles are localized in space they don't bend around corners, but can carry energy and momentum. Waves, on the other hand, are spread out in space. There's some kind of disturbance that can transfer or store energy and momentum. However, waves, unlike particles, can bend around corners. And also, waves can interact with themselves or other waves of the same kind through this phenomenon of interference that was shown in the Little Water Waves video. This concludes this video.